It is economics. It is social, cultural, spiritual. It is everything it should be and everything it shouldn't be. But it is what it is. Remember the guy who was second? Can you imagine how uncomfortable he felt? Look how uncomfortable he is. Do you know they forged a lifelong relationship with those two guys as his pallbearers last year when he sadly passed away? Through adversity, to what many people thought was negative, it certainly awoke me. And with Ali, and with Malcolm, and with Martin, and with John, and with Angela. My pinup was Angela Davis. Sassy lady with an afro comb. I had her up on my wall. And I met her in the late 80s. And she said, what side of the fence will you be on when the moment of truth comes? Will you be on the right side? Will you be on the wrong side? Or will you be rather uncomfortably sitting in the middle? Fence sitters get a very uncomfortable journey. Try it. But images. Two sisters from the streets of LA, dominating Wimbledon, one of the most traditional bastions of English culture. But ultimately, images are all they're supposed to be. Intergenerational, compassion, a feeling of warmth. Wesley, where are you? Where's Wesley? There was a young energy and spirit. Where are you, Wesley? If you cannot inspire him what? with what you do, come here. <laughs> this is what it's all about. In 1993, <laughs> two up, innit? In 1993, a 14-year-old schoolboy was gunned down on the streets of Manchester in England. I decided then that everything that I had seen Ali do now needed to be given life, because I think sport had forgotten its responsibility to the young. Images would suggest that as Leila met Mandela, and in, what was it, 1996, I was to go to South Africa and to contribute to the new South Africa and the role that sport would play in South Africa. It was far greater and more nerve-wracking than anything I would ever do. It transcended my medals, anything I'd ever achieved. And sport played its role in the new South Africa. But images will always convey the fight in life. Images will always tell us. Mike Tyson came to Manchester, one of the most misunderstood in his generation. He could only be what was indoctrinated in him. He reflected a society that influenced him. He made his choices. But I will tell you now, he brought peace to the streets of Moss Side. He saved lives just by being in Manchester for one of his bouts. Young people related to him. Because he was reckless. Because he's all the things that young people relate to. Fearless, reckless, highly spirited. I met him last year when he came back to Manchester and he's as humble as a lamb. He has lost the edge. He has lost the menace. But he did great things and saved many lives. But images will always convey the pursuit of excellence. They will always say things and images will always tell us that when you take a punch, so anyone who says that girls can't hit, I think they can. <laughs> images mean and say so much. But images will always convey the definition of a champion. They will always convey what defines a champion. The youth charter grew out of tragedy. Young lives lost. And by the way, they're still being lost because we're not the solution. Sport is not the solution. Have you noticed how disciplined he's become? He's just here. He's just hanging. How are you doing? Good. But all I would say is this. 14 years on, the Youth Charter is a United Nations NGO. If it had not have made that incredible journey to all five continents and from tragedy become an opportunity that has now gone into 23 countries, for the young people who have come to Manchester have gone back with their own inspiration. They've gone back with tools that engage, motivate, and inspire. If I had not lost my father, I wouldn't be here now. Tragedy becomes opportunity. If I had not seen a Muhammad Ali declaring what he would have been, I would not have thought twice about what I wanted to be. If there had been no rumble in the jungle in 74, 
I would not have been a world champion. Equally, when the opportunity came for me to give back in 1993, because I was living large, and then I had to make a decision, because by making that decision, I was going to lose wealth. But what is that wealth if you aren't rich inside? If you cannot inspire without performing? If you cannot inspire by leading by example? Many things you do will not ever come back to be able to haunt you or encourage you until many years later. The Muhammad Ali Center are the arenas that I perform in now because I go to prisons, schools, communities, government forums. If we hadn't been in the United Nations, Stacey and I would not have met and developed a relationship that only sport can provide. To then see the Muhammad Ali scholars come to Manchester, to England, and again make a difference. Ali coming back again and inspiring a difference. Making people stop and think. This centre will certainly outlive him. But I'm amazed that you've not been to see what will ultimately give you the edge, the winning edge. The reason that you will realise your potential. So whenever you now get ready for that winning moment and you need to look and question why you're here, what is your purpose and how will you inspire and make a difference, remember it can never be about your own individual pursuit. It has to be about something more than that. And out of tragedy will always come opportunity. And it will never be about agents. It will be about you doing what you do best. Many people say if you can bottle inspiration, we would sell it. We don't have to sell it. We are that unique Illumai that can share it, that can embrace it, and that can ultimately articulate it. You have your own homegrown talent. But you now know what Ali has done globally, because I'm here to convey that. I am that messenger that humbly does so for you. My journey has been incredible, but my faith and belief is total in its strength. The Institute and the Centre will convey that spirit because we need it now. That's why I'm here to say to you, I need you winning and I need you inspiring and I need you getting involved on the streets of your communities and then of the streets of other communities. Young people have no direction. You can give them that direction and as a result, you will find your direction. And I guarantee you, if you give that commitment, as Muhammad Ali has shown, he is quiet, but I don't think he's been ever more louder. He is louder more than you will ever know. Louisville are fortunate. You are fortunate. Every day you get up, remember, you are in fortunate company, in a fortunate community, in a fortunate city. And remember now that everything you do will make a difference. Blessings, peace and justice. Love what you do, commit to what you do, and all things will be afforded unto you. Peace. Thank you very much. Not just words of inspiration, but words of guidance. And we do have a few minutes left. We wanted to leave just a few minutes for you to ask questions or to make comments. Uh, because we are recording this, we're going to need to have you speak into the microphone, even though you've probably got a great voice that can project really well. We want to make sure that everything that goes on here tonight we're able to capture. So is there anyone with a question or comment that you want to make to either Jeff or Tony? In fact, gentlemen, why don't you both come back up here and stand up here uh, around the podium. And that way, if, they, if there's a question directed up here, we can, we can get to an, an answer quickly. Uh, who would like to get us started? Raise your hand. I'll come to you with the microphone. I'm one of those MCs that uh, if you don't raise your hand, uh, I'll probably still come to you with a microphone. <laughs> so who would, who would like to? Yes, great. Stand on up. Why don't you say your name and then uh, make your question or comment. Hi, my name is Adrian White. Um, um, my question is for Jeff. You said that uh, you lost your you lost your father at an early age, and you turned that into inspiration, and that helped you grow into an athlete. Um, what advice would you give for someone who is dealing with loss as well to channel that into positive energy for the sport? When you lose someone close, and um, I've had 15 fathers, um, representing maybe 16 countries over all five continents. 
But all I can say is losing my father at seven meant that I was able to cope because I was younger. I grew up around very strong women. Um, I learned that my masculinity could be ultimately expressed and conveyed by what I was feeling. And too many of us guys don't want to get going on with what's going on and it's inside. For all of us and the balance of relationships and when we lose someone close we've simply lost somebody in the physical realm. What I learnt many years later that I am my father's son. He lives within me and I live through him. That's how you cope with loss. I lost my coach before and I decided to go for the 80, sorry, the 92 Olympics because I was pretty good over the hurdles. And I decided I wanted to win an Olympic gold medal because that was the only challenge I had. And I picked up an injury on the last training session before the UK trials. And I got pretty angry because I know that I could have won Olympic gold because I wasn't fighting anyone. I just had to run around in a circle under 48 seconds. How can that be so hard? But I didn't factor for injury. And I lost my coach, Gordon, Gordon Richards. I can honestly say I lost eight people in that one person. And it took me eight years to overcome, and it was then I retired. But if I had not have lost Gordon, if I had not have failed going to the Olympics, I would not be doing what I'm doing with the Youth Charter now. In every tragedy, there is an opportunity. In every adversity or hurdle you will face, there is a positive outcome. It's just that you have to look for it. Other questions or comments? I don't know, Tony, if you wanted to respond to that at all, in terms of dealing with loss. Well, I look at my father. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know mine, and I, I consider that a great loss. I mean, I th he, didn't, he didn't die or anything like that, but I just didn't know him. Uh, he left when I, was, when I was born because, he, you know, drugs got him. And uh, like I said, a lot of people use that as an excuse, not knowing their father. But again, like, like you said, all the tragedy comes, you know, you can you t opportunity because, you know, let's say if he was around, you know, maybe I wouldn't have developed into the athlete that I am because, uh, you know, football came as a response for me of being upset because also my brothers went on and they went to prison. So I didn't have a man around, you know, at all. So I started, football was my outlet. You know, I played and, and I, I, I found, I rebounded by playing football and, He's there. I might be fixing computers or something. You know, I don't, I don't know what I'd be doing uh, if, if my family had stayed together. So it might sound funny, but, but through not knowing my father and losing him, I found football. And uh, because of that, I became the first person to come to college and play. So I, I'm thankful for it. It made me strong. Excellent. Excellent. How about other questions or comments? by the passion and compassion that these two gentlemen have, have shared with each of us. And I, I just, on behalf again of Muhammad and, and Mani Ali, and I hope that I can share a tape with them both, yes. this will be so moving for them to hear the good Reverend and Jeff speak their heart to each of us. And I just thank you both for the inspiration and, and the uh, sharing which you have so privileged us with. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. I, 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 I think we all share uh, share your sentiments. We have really been blessed by have, to have both of these gentlemen here and to have delivered such you know, powerful and, and memorable messages. Uh, you know, the title of this program is Ali, Definition of a Champion. Uh, could I ask you a question? How many persons here uh, in, in this audience here uh, feels that they themselves uh, at least aspire to be a champion by a show of hands. How many are aspiring to that role? Uh, how many of you all, uh, after hearing these two 